Hey guys, it's Ross here and welcome back to Flatback Effects and thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your 2D images and make them 3D. Now this is following on from a tutorial I did a few years ago where I used a 3D projection mapping technique and did the effect all inside of After Effects. Now a lot of you who may have already done that tutorial ran into a lot of issues. So what I've done later in this tutorial is just gone through some of the more common issues that people experience and different ways that you can go about fixing that. So if you're interested in that part of the video, then use the timestamp in the bottom and you can fast forward to that section. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create the same effect, but I'm using a different technique inside of Photoshop and After Effects. Now the images that work best for this sort of effect are the ones that already have a vanishing point in the background. So where you've got leading lines leading to a vanishing point like this one here, or even this one, it's going to work much better than images that don't have that. So this is the image that I'm using and I've also put a link to this one down in the description below. And what I want to do is basically just open this image up inside of Photoshop. Now the version of Photoshop that I'm using is the latest version as of the time of making this video. So over in Photoshop, I'm gonna come up to filter and then down to vanishing point. And what we want to do here is define the planes that we're going to use. So here, what I'm going to do is just draw out my first plane following the lines of my clip here. Now you need to make sure that your grid is blue. If it goes red like it was before, then it's not going to work. So you need to make sure that whole thing is covered like that and make sure that it's not red or anything like that. Now to get the walls, all I have to do is either hold command if I'm on a Mac or control on a PC and just drag up from one of these points. And I can do the same on the other side. I can extend these ones up here. So you should have all of these planes covered by one of these grids, right? So if you had a tunnel, you'd also have to do one on the roof, but that's pretty much all you have to do. Now at this point, what I've also done is I've used the clone stamp and I photoshopped out the light posts. Now, if I go back to After Effects and just show you, if you don't photoshop out those light posts, what happens is you end up with this distortion effect like this, where these layers are all distorted, right? Because it still thinks that they are images. So what I've done is I've added a light post in by cutting one out and adding it over the top and positioned it in 3D space, but I need to remove the image of the light post on the original photo. So the way we do that is you come into Photoshop and once you're in that vanishing point menu, you just use the clone stamp and I can basically select the wall. It tells you how to do it up here, but basically all you have to do is hold down options, select the wall that you're using, and then you can just Photoshop out those imperfections there. So the parts that you want to basically remove. Now I've just removed those light posts already for mine, the ones that are gonna be an issue. And you just need to go through and do that for all of those different things. So you obviously wanna spend your time and do that. Now's the time to do that. Now, once you've done that, then you need to export that for After Effects. What I can do is I can come up to this little button here and then just go export for After Effects. And you can choose the destination and then just name this file, whatever you like, and hit save. Now, depending on the computer you're using, that may take a while to do. But once that's done, then we can just hit OK in Photoshop and just hide that because we don't need that anymore. Now, if you're someone who's not particularly comfortable using Photoshop or even After Effects, and going through this entire process, or you're just someone who needs to get quick results, then I definitely recommend checking out today's sponsor, Envato Elements, because they've already got a heap of pre-made animated packs that you can use to recreate this exact effect. You can see that they've got all of these different templates that you can use to create 3D photos. Now, the best part is this is all included as part of the Envato Elements subscription. And once you've downloaded it using their simple license, you can pretty much use it in all of your commercial projects. Now, there are dedicated plugins for recreating this effect, but they can become really expensive. So this is a great alternative, a much more affordable option 
for those who are just looking for an easy and quick way to recreate this effect. The other great thing about having an Envato Element subscription is that you get access to all of their other downloads as part of your subscription. So you get access to unlimited downloads of millions of stock videos, video templates, music, sound effects, graphic templates, and even photos. So this is something that I've personally been using for a while now. So for one low monthly fee, you get access to unlimited downloads and all of these assets. So if you're interested in this, then I've put a link in the description below so you can check them out. Now the next stage is we want to import that file into After Effects. Now you can't open it natively, so you have to go into import and then select Vanishing Point. And under here, what I'm going to do is select that file and import it. Then I can open up that composition. Now what it does is it automatically creates all the layers for you and it also creates a camera. So with that parented layer, I can control the roll and I can also just select my camera tool by hitting C to rotate through them. So I can move around my scene and you can see that it's done a pretty good job of creating all of that inside of After Effects. Now from this point, all you need to do is basically now start to create an animation. So I'm just gonna create an endpoint here and I'm going to animate my camera and then go across here and I can just create a very basic sort of animation, something like this. So I've just got a basic sort of animation like that. And what I can also do is if you want, you can turn on depth of field, scale this back. I can also just scale up my aperture if I want less or more of that blur. And you can create a little interesting animation here, something that looks like this. So we end up with this little focus pole from the foreground to the background of my image. Now you can just turn that off for the meantime until you're ready to actually render out your final animation. But that's pretty much the whole effect that we've done. Now what I did in my original comp was I also added in another layer over the top. So I went and got my original image and just dragged it here in on top. And then what I did was I grabbed my pen tool and I could just go through and basically just cut out one of these lights. Now you could do this all inside of Photoshop. You don't have to do this in After Effects, but I'm just kind of demonstrating the different things that you can do inside of After Effects here. So with that layer, what I can do is then make that a 3D layer. I'm just gonna reposition the anchor point here by using Y. And basically what you're trying to do is then reposition this in 3D space. So if it's moving around, I can just move it back move it out towards my side of my image here, scale it up. And you can see that I've got that now in a position on the side of my screen. I can also duplicate that, move it over here to the other side of the screen. And now if I just play through that, you can see I've got those two lamp posts in that shot. So now they're moving in the correct orientation of my scene. Now I've also got a problem here with the car. I could also do the same thing by cutting out that car, sticking it over the top, and that's gonna help. But what that basically allows me to do is create a 3D scene all within side of After Effects. So once, I've, once I'm ready, I can then turn on my depth of field again. And then when I play through, I pretty much have my finished scene. Now from this point, it's just a matter of going through and cutting out all of those objects that are going to be moving inside the scene or that don't look right. And then just sticking them in the 3D environment to make it look much more authentic. Now, if you're someone who has done the original tutorial where I show you how to do this all inside of After Effects, then you may have experienced or run into a few issues. So I'm gonna run through the list of things that you can try to try and fix a lot of the issues. Now, the first thing that people have mentioned is turning on fast previews. So that's this button down here. And at the moment, I've just got mine off. And for the tutorial, that seemed to work, but some people have found that they might need to use adaptive resolution in order to get the preview to work. So just be aware that you may need to adjust these in order to, if you're having trouble basically seeing the image. 
The other thing that you also need to check is if you go to the composition settings, you'll also want to come into the 3D renderer and you need to make sure that the renderer is set to classic 3D. If it's not set to classic 3D, then you won't get the material options under each of the layers, which will allow you to customize how the light affects each of those layers. So if you've got a problem where your image is black, then you need to make sure that this is set to classic 3D. Then you can go in and change the material options under each layer. Another thing is if, if your image is blurry, try coming into the options here and making sure that this is set to 4000. When you do that, it will increase the resolution of that image, make it a bit sharper. And also people have found that you need to make sure that this is on full. Some people have just been working in quarter mode and then forgotten to turn it back to full. So make sure that you've got that selected. Otherwise it could be low resolution or a little bit blurry. Another issue that people have found is that you need to go into the material options for each layer and make sure that except lights is turned off, except shadows is set to only and cast shadows should also be off. So that's a good fix for anyone that's having issues seeing the image or it might be dark or something like that then try that as a fix. The last thing is generally with resolution, you want to start with a very high resolution image or as high a resolution as you can get. Otherwise, if you start with a low resolution image, by the time you're zooming into that image, it's not going to look great. So just be aware that that's the most common issues that people have run into and that's some fixes for how you can solve them. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.